So today we are working on 3.2, which is polynomial functions and their graphs. So we looked at quadratic functions earlier. Now we're going to look at polynomials in general, not just quadratics. So um, the standard form of a polynomial function to any degree of n is given by this formula right here. And so we learn some really powerful things from our leading term. So your leading term is whatever term has the highest power of n. And so this is your leading term. It's the coefficient that goes with it, and it is the x with the degree on it. So the leading coefficient uh, is labeled as a n and the degree is n, so the highest number of the um, powers, right? So if we take a look here, we can name and give examples of some of these. So the constant would be degree zero. So that's like the example that we have y equal to one. That, that's a constant. Um, a linear function is degree 1. So that's like when we have y equal to x plus 1, it gives us a line. It's a linear function. A quadratic, we've already talked about how that's where we have a degree of 2. So that's the form y equals x squared plus x plus 1 is an example. And then a cubic would be a degree of 3, so we would have y equals x cubed plus x squared plus x plus 1 as an example. And then a quartic would be degree 4, so y equals x to the fourth plus x cubed plus x squared plus x plus 1, and so on and so forth, right? We could continue that essentially up to infinity, right? But we probably will stay in this range while we are working uh, in this class. So let's take a look at some examples and label the leading term, leading coefficient, degree, and classification. So if we're looking here, you have to remember that your leading term is the one with the highest power. It's not the one that's in the front. So the one with the highest power here is this negative x cubed. So that means our leading coefficient is negative 1, because even though we don't write that 1 in front of the x, we do know it's there. And then the degree is 3, because that is our power that is on the term. And that makes the classification a cubic. So we concentrate so much on understanding what the leading term tells us because it tells us a lot about the end behaviors of our graphs. So when a n is less than zero, your right um, side falls. So it falls, the right falls. So that means you're going down on the right side of your graph. If a n is greater than zero, then your right uh, rises. And so it means it's going like that at the end of your graph. Well, um, your coefficient also tells us um, if n is odd, then your tails go in opposite directions. Okay, so you're either looking at something like this or something like this. If n is even, then they go, tails go in the same direction. So you're either looking at this or at this. And that is visualized by your four options that are given in this little table. So I feel like this table is really important for helping you determine things. So let's look at the end behavior of some problems. So again, we're looking at our leading term. Our leading term here is 3x to the fourth. It's the one that has the highest power. 
So in this case, a m is 3. Okay. So 3 is greater than 0. So we know that the right is going to increase. Okay. I'm writing it in this point form so you have an idea. And then n is 4, so that's even. So since it's even, it's going in the same direction. So it's going to be going up, up here. If we look here, we have x to the fifth. So our a n is 1, even though we don't write it, which is greater than 0. So we're going up. And then our n is 5, which is odd, which means opposite. So we're going down on the left-hand side. So here we have negative 5 is our a n. So negative 5 is less than 0. So that means we're going down on the right hand side. And our n is 3. So that's odd. So they're opposites. So that is what the tails look like on that one. So then um, this one here is special. It's factored instead of multiplied out, which can be a good and bad thing when we're trying to um, graph these problems. So all you have to remember is we only care about the leading coefficient. So the leading coefficient comes from whatever's on the outside, negative 4x cubed, times the leading coefficient when you multiply out x minus 1 times x minus 1. So x squared will be that leading coefficient times, there's a 1 here, so this is just going to be x. So if we multiply those three things out, then for our leading term, we get negative 4x, and then you're just adding the exponents, right? 3, 4, 5, 6. So negative 4x uh, to the 6th power is going to be our leading term there. So we don't have to multiply the whole thing out. We just need to understand how the multiplication would work to get that leading term. So when we do that, negative 4 is less than 0 for our a n. So we know we're going to go down. And then our n is 6, which is even, which means they're going to go the same direction. So this one's going to be down as well. So now we've been able to determine the n behavior for our problems here, and that will only help us when we get ready to graph. So we also need to remember how to get zeros when we do polynomials. Um, so we know that we can let y equals zero to get the x-intercepts, and we can let x equals 0 to get the y-intercepts. We also need to understand multiplicity. So how many times we get a particular x-intercept is the multiplicity. And multiplicity is either considered even or odd. So for example, if I had x minus 2 times x minus 2, well, I know x equals 2 is my solution for both of those, but I get that twice. So my multiplicity is even. And when your multiplicity is even, you're going to touch the x-axis and turn. You're not actually going to cross the x-axis. But if I had something like x minus 2, um, x minus 1 in my factor form, then I know I have an x equal 2 and x equal 1. They only occur once, so this is odd. So both of these would cross the x-axis at those zeros. So let's look uh, what happens here. So I want to find the zeros and state the multiplicity and the behavior of each. So for this one, if I have negative x cubed minus 2x squared equal to 0, I can factor out a negative x squared to give me x plus 
2 equals 0. So then I set both terms equal to 0 and solve. So x equals 0 and x equals negative 2. So those are both solutions. So the multiplicity of this one is 2, which is even, which means we're going to touch and turn. And then we have the multiplicity of this one. Um, and the way we know this multiplicity is 2 is because let's not forget the fact that we had this square here. That means this is occurring twice, right? So that's where this multiplicity of 2 comes from. Here, this is only occurring once on this side. So our multiplicity is 1. So it is odd. So we're going to cross the x-axis. at that point. So let's look at another. If we have x minus 4 or x cubed, Lord Jesus, x to the fourth minus 4x four cubed plus 4x squared. First, I can factor out an x squared. Then that gives me x squared minus 4x plus 4. That's good because then this is one of our uh, easy forms, right? We know that this is x squared times x uh, plus 2 times x minus, nope, both x minus 2. It's a special form of x minus 2. Yep. So x minus 2 times x minus 2 equals 0. So this x minus 2 is going to give us x equal to positive 2, but it happens twice. So our multiplicity is 2, which is even. So we know we're going to touch and turn there. This one here is going to give us x equals 0, right? Because x squared equals 0. But again, that multiplicity is 2 because of the square. So it's going to touch and turn as well. So on this one here, it says find the zeros of f of x, where we have x to the fourth minus 8x squared minus 9. So this is a special type. If you um, have a 4 and a 2 here and then nothing there, you can let y equal x squared. If you do that, then you have y squared minus 8y minus 9. That makes it a lot easier to factor. We know that would factor to y minus 9 times y plus 9. So once we factor that, um, we can substitute back in our x, right? So that's x squared minus 9 times x squared plus 9. So we have x squared equals 9 and x squared equals negative 9. Well, this negative here means this is imaginary. So we're not going to have to worry about that. It's not going to touch or anything. So we can just kind of let that go away. But this x squared here equals 9. We know that's going to be x is equal to plus or minus 3. So we have one of each of those, right? So we have x equal to negative 3 and x equal to 3. So the multiplicity for both of these is 1, which is odd. So we're going to cross on both of those. So this is a reminder of how to factor by grouping because it might have been a while since um, we covered this. We covered that back in chapter 1. Um, so let's just do a couple of examples of factoring by grouping and combining it with this multiplicity idea. So this is a review of factoring by grouping. Um, you can review that. We're going to go ahead and do some examples. So if we have negative x cubed plus 2x squared plus 4x minus 8, we divide it in the middle 
and then factor. So here I can pull out a negative x, which will give me x squared, uh, a negative x squared actually. So that gives me an x minus 2. We want x minus 2 here, that's the idea. So we can pull out a, a 4 there, and it's a positive 4 that we're pulling out. So now we end up with negative x squared plus 4 times x minus 2. If we set those both equal to 0, negative x squared plus 4 equals 0, x minus 2 equals 0. Then we get negative x squared equals negative 4, so x squared equals 4, so x equals plus or minus 2. Here, x equals 2, so we have x equal 2, x equal 2, x equal 1, or sorry, negative 2. So here the multiplicity of, is 2, so we're going to touch and turn. Here the multiplicity is 1, so we're going to cross. So let's try one more like this. So here I'm going to divide it in half again. So if I pull out x squared, I'm left with 2x plus 1. So that means I want 2x plus 1 here. To do that, I have to pull out a positive 4. So I get x squared plus 4 times 2x plus 1. I set both of those equal to 0 to solve. Here I get x squared equals negative 4. This is going to give me imaginary again, so I don't need to worry about this one. I just need to focus on this other one. So I get 2x equals negative 1 and x equals negative 1 half. The multiplicity is 1. So we are going to cross because it is an odd multiplicity. So let's tie the last two ideas together, the in behavior with this um, idea of multiplicity. So if we take a look at this one here, um, this one's already factored. So we can go ahead and just state the multiplicities and we get those based off of the um, exponents here, right? So this exponent, even though we don't write it, we know that this exponent is 1. Okay, so if we have 9x squared equals 0, that's just going to be x squared equals uh, positive 9. So x equals plus or minus 3. Okay. Um, then we have x minus 4 equals 0. We have that one cubed, so we have to remember that it's cubed. Um, so we have x equals 4, but it's cubed, so its multiplicity is 3. Okay, and then we have x plus 1 equals 0, so x equals negative 1, and that multiplicity is 1. So these are x equal negative 3 and x equal 3. So actually, oh yeah, no, that's right. So we're good here. So both of those multiplicities are 1. So let's clean this up a little bit. Um, so we have x equal negative 3, which has a multiplicity of 1, so it's going to cross. We have x equal positive 3, multiplicity of 1, it's going to cross. x equals 4, multiplicity of 3, it's going to cross. And x equals negative 1, multiplicity of 1, it's going to cross. So then to do degree and in behavior, remember for that part, you're just multiplying the leading coefficients. So negative 
9, uh, 9x squared times x cubed from the second term times x. So we get negative 9, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, x to the sixth. So our degree is negative 6. Oh, I'm sorry, our degree is positive 6. Our degree is 6. So our n behavior, because 9 is negative, we're going down. Because our degree is even, both sides are going down. So let's actually um, remember just uh, finding zeros, right? Real zeros. So we know that our greatest power, our leading um, degree here, tells us how many possible real zeros we have, which means that we have that many possible x-intercepts. And then we have that minus 1 um, possible terms in our graph. Okay, so for this example, we have six real zeros, which means we could have up to six intercepts, which means we can have up to five terms. And it says maximum because you could get some um, imaginary zeros. And if you got imaginary zeros, then they wouldn't be part of your graph. So then we can use this step-by-step -step guide, combining all of our learning here to graph, which I am going to go ahead and walk you through. So if we want to graph the polynomial function with the information below, we're told we have negative x cubed minus 2x. So a couple of things. First, we identify our leading term. Our leading term is negative x cubed. So that means that our a n is negative 1, because even though we don't write that 1 in front of the x, we know it's there. So that is less than 0, which means that the right side falls. So we know that the right side is going to fall. And then our degree is 3 from that leading coefficient term, 3. That is odd, so they're going to go in opposite directions. So since this one falls, this one's going to rise. So the max number of zeros comes from the fact that we have three as our degree, which means at most we could have two turning points. Regardless of the polynomial, um, we know that the c value, regardless here, if we put 0 in for x, those are going to cancel to go to x, right? So if we had negative 0 cubed minus 2 times 0 squared, that equals 0, right? We know that. So our y-intercept is at the origin, 0, 0. So then we need our zeros and multiplicities. We've actually done this. We factored this one in a previous slide. So we got um, negative x squared times x plus 2. So we get negative x squared equal to 0, x plus 2 equal to 0. So then we get uh, x equals 0, but it has a multiplicity of 2, which means it's going to touch because it's even. And then here we get x equal negative 2. It has a multiplicity of 1, which means it's going to cross. So our x intercepts are going to be at the origin, 0, 0. We're going to touch there and turn. And then um, negative 2, 0. And we're going to cross there. So if we take all this information we know, we know we have a point here, and we know we have a point here. We know that the end behavior of the left side is going up and the end behavior of the right side is going down. 
we know that we cross the x-axis at negative 2, which means at some point it's going to have to turn and come back to, to touch the x-axis at the origin and then turn and go back down. So this is what our graph would look like. Let's look at another. If we um, look at this, our leading term is this negative x cubed. So again, a n is negative, so it's going to fall. So a n is negative 1, less than 0, so right falls. n is cubed, so n is equal to 3, which is odd. So they're going to go the opposite direction. So we're going to have another graph that looks like that with our tails in opposite directions. The max number of zeros here is 3. So the max number of turning points is 2. Our y-intercept, if we put in 0 for each of these x's, they're all going to go away and we're going to be left with negative 8. So 0, negative 8 is our y-intercept. So I'm going to factor over here. Oh, wait, we did it on a previous slide. We factored on a previous slide. Um, but just to remind you, I'm going to factor over here. If we had 0 equal um, negative x squared, we pulled out. Then we got x minus 2. Let me just start it again from the beginning just to walk through it. We have negative x cubed plus 2x squared plus 4x minus 8 equals 0. And we can pull, split it in half, factor by grouping, pull out a negative x squared, and we get x minus 2. So we pull out a 4 here to get x minus 2. That 4 is positive. So then we have x minus 2 times negative x squared minus or plus 4. And so we have x minus 2 equals 0 to give us x equals 2. So this has a multiplicity of 1 so far. And then here we have negative x squared equals negative 4. So x squared equals positive 4. So x equals plus or minus 2. So we have two positive x's, so the multiplicity is 2, so um, x equals 2 has a multiplicity of 2, which means we're going to uh, touch and turn at the point 2, 0. And x equals negative 2 only happens once, so x equals negative 2 has a multiplicity of 1. So we're going to cross at a negative 2, 0. So if we take all that information to, scratch the, to um, sketch the graph, we have 0, negative 8 as a point. We have negative 2, 0 as a point, and we have 2, 0 as a point. We know our end behavior. We're going to go up like this and down like this. We know that at negative 2, we cross the x-axis. And we're going to have to come down here, and we're going to turn there and come back up and just touch the x-axis, not actually cross there. So this is what our graph would look like for this So let's do one more. On this one, we have negative 1 half x plus 3 x minus 1 squared plus uh, times x plus 2. So for our n behavior first, we have to find the leading term. So don't forget to do that. So for the leading term here, we're going to take that negative 1 half times the x from here times x squared from here times x from here. So we end up with negative 1 half x to the fourth. Okay, so our an 
is negative one half, which is less than zero. So uh, we're going to fall on the right. And then our n is four. So that is even. So we're going to go the same direction. So our n behavior is going down on both sides. Mm -hmm. Our max number of zeros is four because that's going to be a degree of our leading term. That means the max number of turning points is three. To find the y-intercept here, you would just substitute in zero um, to all of these points. So we'd have negative one half times zero plus three times zero minus one squared times zero plus two. So we get negative one half times three times one times two, because that negative one squared is just going to be one. So then those two cancel and we end up with negative three. So our y-intercept is zero, negative three. Our x-intercepts, because it's already factored, we have all of our x-intercepts we need. We know we're going to have x equals negative three. The power on that is 1, so the multiplicity is 1, which means we're going to cross. We have x equals 1. That has a square on it, so the multiplicity is 2, so we're going to touch. And we have x equal negative 2, which doesn't have a power, so we know that that is a power of 1, so it's going to cross. And so it's crossing at the point negative three zero, it touches at the point one zero, and it crosses at the point negative two zero. So because we had so much work here, which if you weren't realizing where I was getting this information from the zeros and the multiplicity here, this comes from each of these parts here. So if we have x plus three, we're doing x plus three equals zero. Here, if we have x minus 1 squared, I have x minus 1 equals 0 to give me that, but it's squared, so that's where the multiplicity of 2 comes from. And then x plus 2 is what I was doing here, equal to 0, and again, the multiplicity was 1. So just to review that for you guys. All right, let's look at... Um, the graph and go ahead and sketch the graph. This is the last graph we're going to do. So let's go ahead and sketch it. So we have a point at um, negative 3 on the x-axis, negative 2 on the x-axis, and 1 on the x-axis. We also have our y-intercept at negative 3. We know that both sides are going down. Okay. So we know that we're going to cross the x-axis on this first one. We're going to cross on the second one, so we're going to have to come back down. There's going to be a turn. And then we're going to have to go through the x-intercept, and then we're going to touch and come back down. And, of course, labeling your points is, is helpful, right? This was 0, negative 3. This is 1, 0. This is negative 2, 0. And this is negative 3, 0. And so we got all that information from the previous slide here. All right, so that is the conclusion of 3.2. Now we'll see you for 3.3.